had a question that you were talking about the glass paintings mm -hmm. and how, like the light and how it would be inside of them. By putting them against the wall, you don't have a light. So no, um, but they're still shining, and uh -huh. I don't. And didn't speak about light yeah. inside them. As um, like uh, as <laughs> I spoke about the question, where does the light come from? Where does yeah. it come from? Yeah. Come in, and that's uh, like. Where is it dark? Where, mm -hmm. Yeah, but um, yeah, sorry. Yes, yeah, no. They're still I mean, shiny. They're still shiny from <laughs> light, but then it's a, an artificial light, no? From no. From our world, no? It's, uh, it's not it an artificial well, light. Well, from the glass, you mean? Yeah. The, uh -huh. it's, uh, it's something that's created by the yeah. material because yeah. of. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But this is ju these are just yeah. um, illusions that yeah. I'm thinking yeah. of. You don't yeah. even have to see it or think of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You mentioned that woodcut was uh, something that you've always worked with. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that was has a reproductive nature. It, it will reproduce the same image. Well, not exactly the same image. It's supposed to reproduce the same image. Um, do you plan to, do you reproduce images from the same woodcut in different ways or is that, is that something that you think about, like how, how different will it look next time? Oh no, they they pretty much look the same, yeah. yeah. Um, it's a, it's a, it's a medium that produces multiples, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, and um, these woodcuts are not printed by myself. Like okay. I print them in a um, with a printer in a workshop. And um, if they're very good printers, they aim for identity. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's their craft. Yeah. But that's something that could only be done. That's something that's very controlled in a contemporary way, right? Wouldn't you say? Oh, also in the old days, like I mean, it's a it's a medieval technique. Yeah, the aim was to reproduce the same image. Yeah. But and um, there is a certain amount uh, of numbers that you can um, use the same relief board. Um, I don't know because I do editions of ten, but I guess you could do like five hundred mm -hmm. or so. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just curious. Um, yeah, I was wondering if you can maybe. Um, Tell us a little bit about your residence here, six months residence in Italy, and how it influenced um, your work in making yeah. words. Interesting for us to hear about. Um, yeah, it was um, three months in Rome and three yeah. months in Biella and um, in the north of Italy. And um, for example, I've, I did a trip to Assisi where I saw the Giotto. Um, frescoes and they're relevant for this this particular series of woodcuts that you see um, and other things that you don't see that I keep working on I mean like <laughs> like um, um, I'm interested in mosses at the moment and it has to do with certain fountains in Ro that I saw in Rome yeah. um, 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 like I set out to um, work about poverty in Arte, the notion of poverty in Arte Povera and um, in monastic movements and their relationship. So that was the project um, that I had in mind um, and that I came here with. And um, and I realized I'm not interested in Arte Povera at all, <laughs> and um, that I find it um, very. Um, um, difficult to understand aesthetically. I, I, I nearly find it kitschy, aesthetically, and um, and it's like um, what's been um, in Germany by Josef Beuys, or what's been um, what's been done in Germany by Josef Beuys, or what's been done in in um, the U.S. by um, Fluxus artists, maybe, which is much closer to me aesthetically. So that was a surprise, for example. So I started to become interested in. Proto Arte Povera, also what's uh, what's been done um, before Arte Povera, actually, because um, I found it more interesting aesthetically. 
Yeah, so this is something that's, uh, that that um, influenced my work. You saw this table in the exhibition, and that's very very much related to what I saw here in the um, um, collection. And um, yeah. And uh, are you using this residency in your f like further projects? Like Sorry. The, are you getting inspiration from this residency also for future projects? Yes. Okay. Yes. But also. Um, so it's um, also this exhibition is not one project. Yeah. You see, like a, a section of the exhibition was shown um, in Sao Paulo, mm -hmm. for example, mm -hmm. and, and and parts of it will be shown again and so on. So this is all um, a mesh of work and life, I guess. Yeah. Okay. It's like um, uh, also there's something organic to it. I wouldn't want to have. Uh, yeah, I don't work like this. That it's one project. Mm. Um, you mentioned earlier your interest in the art world as a closed community. Could you expand on that a little bit, and then I'll ask another question. Yeah. <laughs> um, did I say that art world as a closed community? Because I don't see it as a closed community, but I'm. Um, but it, it shares some features, or yeah, mm -hmm. or I, I'm interested in in it in terms of it being not a free world. Yeah. So um, like people from outside think um, art has to do a lot with freedom. And, um, and um, ideally we get to that point. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> um, but there's a lot of, um, of, um, opus of it that's opposed to this um, perception of precon preconception. Yeah, for example, fashion, the question of fashion in the art world, yeah. the question of um, what you're supposed to do or what you're not supposed to do, how you're supposed to behave, how you're supposed to look like, um, what, what clothes you're supposed to wear, um, and so on. And this is um, very, all very normative and conventional. Yeah? Um, and, um, and all very embarrassing too. Yeah? Mm. And um, yeah, so I guess, um, this this touches upon your question. Yeah. So yeah. essentially, the the kind of dialectic between art as an expressive and free yeah. m medium of expression, if you will, versus the art world and its expectations of art and the way that you represent yourself or represent your artwork. Both. Yeah. Both. Okay. Yeah. And also, what is uh, even what is perceived? I think has to do with. Um, fashions or conventions, like what is written about at a certain moment, like what people are open to yeah, at a certain mm -hmm. moment, which discourses people are open to at a certain moment, which books we read, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. what reading lists we agree on. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask, <coughs> going back to the theme of, of shame, yeah. How do you conceive shame in a positive way, and like the shame, like a social uh, aspect, or uh, also the the aspect for their own artists. The aspect for the their artists. Own, yes. So I don't perceive shame in a positive way. It's awful, no, and um, it's a negative. It's a it's a what uh, what. Um, um, scientists of emotion call a dysphoric emotion, the opposite of a euphoric em emotion. It makes you shrink and makes you want to run away. And it, that won't change. But, um, but it's um, helpful to um, look at um, um, what, what am I ashamed of or what are we ashamed of. And um, do I actually want to be ashamed of this? Yeah? So it, um, to experience shame makes makes me understand um, the world I live in, yeah? and that's what I, why I call shame a heuristic feeling. Like if I'm embarrassed of certain things, I understand um, what people deem to be bad. Yeah? It's because it's a it's a it's a learned emotion, mm -hmm. and um, and then post. Here, um, afterwards, you can you can um, you can think about the fact: Do I want to do I want to judge in this way? Yeah. And um, 
art and shame. I think I was touching about this um, um, in relation to your question. Yeah. So. When you put, are you speaking about shame just in relation to putting your work on display, making yourself vulnerable to judgment and deciding whether you feel something. shame or not? Yeah, no, but this will always happen. Yeah, yeah. Sure. This mm -hmm. will always happen. But there are certain strategies in art that you um, can avoid shame, I think, like um, by doing very, for example, obscurist work mm -hmm. or very um, rationalistic work. Or, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.